Yes, uh, hello. Thanks to participate in this session. It's um, quite not so technical session as we heard before. We are not programming or something like this. <coughs> Even as the uh, reason behind um, what we are talking about here um, doing business with uh, LibreOffice, which one part could be such things we have seen doing Python macros for automation of uh, things and so on. So what we are talking here is about the LibreOffice certification program. It's a program from the Document Foundation <coughs> to um, uh, give something like a recognition or quality seal from the Document Foundation, the home of LibreOffice, uh, to persons, consultants, um, who are doing um, provable, good work, good jobs, so that if a customer needs some service, for example, pipe programming and so on, can have a look on a list in the website of uh, LibreOffice, um, where such certified people um, are mentioned, and then you can contact them and, and, and uh, hire them for, for some consultancy work and so on. So this is the, the uh, idea behind. Um, I introduce myself first, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's, uh, I'm Lothar Wecker. I'm, um, uh, mainly here in the conference with two hats. One hat is uh, to represent uh, the document uh, foundation uh, in the in the conference and, and uh, uh, showing recognition of, from the foundation side for the very active and, and uh, powerful Asian community. And the second uh, role is that uh, I'm with an uh, other colleague, uh, the co-chair of the LibreOffice Certification Committee, the committee who are doing the certification process we are talking here again. And that's not done by myself, it's uh, done of a group of a person and uh, Franklin is also in this group who are doing this certification. Yeah. <coughs> I'm Frederick from Taiwan. Uh, actually, I'm the, I'm the one that pushed the Taiwanese government to adopt the OBF policy and the LIBOR office. So uh, I'm trying to share the experience in Taiwan to the, in the in the LIBOR community. And so <clears throat> also I will get I get my certification later. So later I will share my experience about the certification program. Especially from the Asian yes, yes. culture. Yeah. So first of all, um, before we discuss some things, and 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 uh, Franklin will will bring in um, uh, some cultural aspects or, or as special aspects from the Asian uh, side. Let's talk about what is the certification program for for what is is it granted, uh, which uh, certificates are there and so on. So <clears throat> I mentioned this slide uh, this morning already um, and, and that I hear again because I want to, to um, mention the program itself, it's running five years, six years already. At least. At least, at least. But um, with an evolving um, ecosystem with an evolving software, with evolving needs of customers, with evolving um, market partners with new, uh, for example, with new versions for new devices on online or on mobile. There is also permanently uh, the need to um, uh, to, to go with the certification program further, to, to bring in new um, know-how areas, to check if the uh, already certified people are aware of these themes and to discuss 
uh, such things, to transfer know-how, to guarantee the quality um, of these uh, certified consultants. Uh, so, the, the, the third program at Eclans is, is what it is uh, written here. It's for corporate consultants or individual consultants um, which are doing um, professional services for customers. So what is not perhaps easier to explain, it's uh, not an end user certificate until now. We are thinking about that. We are thinking about a few years about that now, but uh, we are doing not such an end user certification like Linux Foundation do or like other organizations do. This is pure for um, professionals, professional consultants, and it's pure for um, already experienced ones. I will later, I will explain how to come experienced in, in these uh, areas, but um, nowadays we are uh, recognizing uh, people and uh, consultants who already have done um, business with customers. This is really um, important because um, we just can value results if they are done and say, okay, this is an, um, a qualified consultant, this is a qualified developer, this is a world, uh, qualified... Um. Even more, they should be somehow um, involved in the, in the project, in the um, uh, LibreOffice project and, and with that be an ambassador for uh, for LibreOffice. We see often consultants who are not truly committed in open source and its values. And with that we want to guarantee that the, the consultants going out, running out and uh, installing LibreOffice are really committed in open source. So we certify people not companies. We are asked often to give seals to a company, to a whole company, but up till now we are not doing this. We are doing really personal certifications. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, really uh, uh, important thing is we are doing this uh, worldwide and trying with that to bring LibreOffice to um, uh, to all continents. It's not just an, an European, and as we see here in Asia, Asia was the first one uh, uh, out of Europe where this works. Um, in combination with the uh, regionally, with the local community ecosystem partners, we are trying to adapt this uh, program in, in the continent or in the cultural room where this uh, is uh, done. So this is the reason why we are both sitting here, um, because we have learned in our journey that there are special things we, we European see different. See, one of the first things we, one sentence, frankly, one of the first, first things we um, experienced is you see a different style of making slides from European uh, members. Uh, I'm doing slides with a lot of text on it, the typical uh, uh, European uh, style. And the other way around, if you go to Asia, you have a lot of slides with memes, with just a, just a, just a picture. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely what we learned is one of the first things, a difference. And this makes, uh, this is important in the training area. When I explain which uh, person we uh, will certify, there's a trainer certification. So this is really, really important. Frankly, sorry. So, <coughs> no, because you just mentioned that I'm the first uh, be certified outside the room, right? I'm from Taiwan, from Asia. Uh, maybe later I will share the, the first time we, we, we exchange 
Uh, but anyway, you know, we see, diff we see things very different from them. So that's why they invited me to join the certification committee. And I start to help, help the members in Asia, like in Taiwan, in Japan. So far, not anyone from Indonesia yet, but of course, I would like to help people in Indonesia to get certification. So later, I will explain my experience my experience to get certification and my experience to help others to get certification. Okay. <coughs> so, what uh, certificates exist in this kind of uh, environment I've, I've introduced? There are actually four kinds of, of LibreOffice certifications. Um, the first one in the row is, is pretty new. Um, it's um, beside the developer certification a little bit individual because um, it follows not the, the, the migrators and drainers um, application process but it's individual. This new basic level certification is not, an ad, not just an end user certification but it is a certification um, as recognition of the document foundation for people who need such recognition in their environment. Often, um, for example, um, we have one guy in, uh, in, in South Africa, um, yeah, what was the country? Morocco. Yeah, there is a special country in, in, in South Africa, I don't, re don't remember the name. And he is um, promoting lead pro office in the university area and in the governmental area. And he said, um, uh, he spoke to us and he, he verified with documents and so on that he is doing a lot of lobbying for, for Libre Office and so on. But he said it would be easier for him, doors are more open if he gets such a recognition. And this is this basic level certification, which you can, which is granted by recognition, so that you are doing important things for for lobbying and for um, for building community, local communities, uh, and so on. There's a, a second way. Uh, I will mention uh, the workshop uh, at, at the end. Um, if you are doing a workshop to, uh, with uh, uh, for these. Uh, developer roles for these migrator roles for these trainer roles then you will first be granted such a basic level certification and if you have made the workshop and done experience with true real uh, customers uh, afterwards you can apply for these um, uh, professional developer migrators or trainers. What is the role of them? Okay, basic level I've explained. Developer is, um, uh, you are coding, you are doing um, development in the source of LibreOffice, so it may be bug fixing, it may be new features in the core, and so on. And to have, um, in, in the process, to upstream, up, upload, uh, um, developer commitments, there are different levels uh, for quality assurance and the last level is one uh, that uh, is controlled by certified professional developer so they uh, have a look uh, on, on the code and say okay this is good code and it goes into the core of uh, LibreOffice. It is not by um, application so um, it is a certificate it is a certificate by invitation. It, it runs like this. Uh, you are engaged in the development. You are doing uh, development in C++ or something else. Um, doing commitments, which are, is controlled by these uh, um, people. Um, also called engineering steering committee. And if you have done quite a lot of commitments which were accepted and you are recognized, oh look, have a look, it's the 10th uh, commitment you have done, it, you have done good, uh, then you will be invited uh, to get the certification to be a professional developer and with that uh, new tasks to have also code reviews uh, and, and so on. 
The other two uh, roles, migrators and trainers, are um, done by application form. So you um, ask the committee um, for being a certified migrator and trainer. But please, again, um, read what are the prerequisitions for these certifications. So it's to coordinate the migration process from a proprietary suite to LibreOffice. Which proprietary suite this may be, this could be Microsoft Office, this could be another uh, office. Mainly the difference is between the document formats. So one of the biggest issue in a migration is changing the document format and you have to be uh, experienced with such tasks. What are the backfolds, what are the cornerstones and, and so on. And as well as the professional trainer, teach the use of LibreOffice at basic, intermediate or advanced level, creating training materials. So it's not just teaching one module, it's teaching or tr training all kind of um, uh, people who want to be trained in a um, professional environment. For example, it's not quite the same to train end users or supporters. Typically in professional environments you have something like a first uh, support, second support level, third support level. And it's different, a, a, a huge difference to train uh, uh, first level supporters than end users. And um, what we have done meanwhile, and that's the kind of things where cultural aspects come in, um, we have tried to, to explain what, what we think as document foundation when we certify people, what we think what is high quality in this role. What is a high quality mi migration? And we, we described the migration protocol with all these um, tasks here. Um, which have to be fulfilled and conducted by a high, high quality certified uh, migration consultant. So it's not just the deployment, deploy LibreOffice, it's first of all an analysis and an impact uh, test what is uh, going on if we take away the Microsoft Office license and put uh, the, the LibreOffice. Integration issues you have other software which is integrated with Microsoft Office. What's happening there if there's no Microsoft Office license anymore? And so on. Training mentioned, support issues, first level, second level, third level uh, thing. And this is certainly, uh, okay, I, I missed this slide. This is certainly not done only in this sequential uh, as in this graphic is shown in this uh, sequential area, it's overlapping and it's like a circle. And if you have uh, implemented this, you have to think uh, again, what is the need in the, in the deployment? Some, some remarks to, to this well, from... from the, uh, for, for example, the first time I got, I get a migration consultant, the certification, I mentioned that the protocol I use in Taiwanese government is different from this. So, of course, if you want to get the certification of migration, you, uh, you don't need to stick to that, but you need to know why they design this way. And of course, everywhere they have their culture, they have their different things. So maybe not always the same way, but only if you can explain well your way, Right, okay? Because you have the experience, you migrate to this unit, large or small, that's, that doesn't matter, but you have your way, you explain your way, they all can accept. Okay? So, so you good. don't need to stick to that, but you, of course, you need to understand why they decided to. And uh, you can explain oh, how, how I do that, you know, for example, in our government. And, and that's the trick by, the, yeah. by, by it. So, this is the starting point, but if uh, Asian consultant tell us, hey, come on, uh, training is not uh, in this stage, training is uh, at the end or something like this. 
we want to hear that. We want to hear such things and to learn by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by our own um, and to evolve this migration protocol in this sense. So, as Franklin said, explain differences, explain why you do it, it perhaps in another way and we will recognize this and we will try to, to integrate this. In for, for example, the communication phase in Taiwan, I started the communication phase very early. Very early, even from the start, I need to communicate to all, all people, all key people, all key persons. Because the, the concept is stick to Microsoft. Right? So we need to communicate then why we need to do that at first. So that, that's the difference, but of course you can explain your way, then the, that can accept it. Yeah. yeah. By the way, um, I'm doing a lot of migration uh, uh, projects uh, with my customers. And uh, I've developed my own uh, methodology uh, going through these uh, stages. Uh, so everybody is welcome, but you have to explain it. You have to openly, transparently show your know-how to, to the committee. Same with trainer. Uh, we have uh, tried to, to conduct a protocol, a training protocol, saying what uh, out of our experience is part of a, a trainer um, profile, what he all, all the tasks, what he have to do. It's not just train uh, end users. It's not just train one module. It's not just uh, train. It's also conducting the training. What is needed by it? There are so different customer levels for training. I uh, uh, um, uh, experience. Uh, some have um, trainings before in the in the uh, proprietary office suite, so you can't start uh, by zero. Others you have to start by zero because they don't know what is a text editor or something like this. So this is the first step, and so on on this process. So what we are doing in this certification process, we 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 check. The, the, the know-how of the consultant, um, what are you doing in this on uh, different stages, show us your, your material, uh, and so on. LibreOffice developer, I explained that this is not by application, not by done by this uh, migration and trainer um, uh, committee, but by the engineering steering committee, by invitation. So this is, this is granted in the way when you are contributing code. Then in some stage there will be definitely one who asking you, hey guy, you are doing good stuff, would you uh, want to be a certified uh, developer and help us in this high quality um, developing uh, area. So, so, <clears throat> so we have uh, some local companies, they want to get involved to the business and uh, they come to ask me that, can I apply for the certified certi certi developer? They think this title can shine the, the, the brand, you know? But I said, no, sorry. You need to contribute first, and they will invite you, not you apply for that. Because you want to contribute to the source, that actually is pretty strict. You need to stick to the coding style. Right? They, they cannot let every commit directly into the code, right? So if they, if they accept your commit enough times, they will invite you. Not you apply for that just to get the title. So that's why I think this certification is pretty valuable because of this. Definitely. Okay, so... Um let me, before I uh, show the way how to applicate uh, for the migrators and trainer protocol, let me mention some things. I, I, I introduced this, that we have a long history and these uh, migrator, trainer, these services um, uh, evolve with the time in, in different um, angles of know-how and so on. I want to give a glimpse of uh, items which are very important now, which were not, not important 10 years ago where LibreOffice was born and 20 years ago where OpenOffice 
uh, was born. So just a few things, uh, and perhaps you can comment this from, from, <laughs> from the uh, Asian side. Um, yeah, there's a huge hype doing everything in the browser. Cloud stuff and so on. So the uh, migration have turned also to integrate the, the, the online um, uh, office suite, which I've uh, this morning I've said, okay, we have different ecosystem solutions for having LibreOffice Online uh, in, 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 in a different uh, branded version. But, but often, in, in the last time, with my experience, it's forgotten, even from the customer, it's forgotten they still need the desktop client. They still need the desktop client. That have consequences in training, this has consequences in migrating the document format, this has consequences for integration issues. It's a total different task to integrate the online version with a ERP system or the client version with an ERP system. And you have to decide on which side do you want this integration and so on. So, even in countries where not everywhere you have internet or um, uh, wireless access, and to be honest, there are a lot of such areas in Germany, still in Germany, where you have no wireless access, um, you need this uh, desktop client installation. Yeah. Stuff. You just mentioned uh, some, some people, some clients, uh, for, for me, some people in our governments, they always think that they want every feature in the online solution. Every feature in desktop version, they want it in online version. And the one of one of the things I told my our trainers is that you need to tell the user, you need to tell your students, it's not the case. The online solution, the value of online solution is collaborative editing. They can edit a document together. Right, without conflicting, without being erased by others. But online solution is almost impossible, even for Microsoft or Google, it's almost impossible to implement every feature an online solution. So of course you need, usually you, you usually work a draft together online, and then you face it, you find it with the desktop version. That's the, I think that's the correct concept. So I usually told our trainers, you need to tell your students not accept everything they ask. You know? yeah, yeah. So this is a kind of issue item we purely discuss with the applicant. What is your opinion about that? What is your experience about that? How do you doing with this uh, problem and so on? Same with right strategy for document format. This, I, as I mentioned, it's it's the the most uh, important decision in a uh, company in a professional environment. Which document format do you choosing with LibreOffice? Um, and there are this is really an, a point where you can discuss uh, mm. days uh, yes. what to do. But but it have at least it have to be. Uh, th thought through um, which consequences uh, are coming with that and so on. So just saying, okay, I change the office suite, but uh, but will produce uh, document uh, Microsoft Office documents uh, with with it. What is possible because of interoperability will not be the best uh, choice uh, for it. Yeah, that that is the main topic of my communication base. I, I, I told the, I told the people that software between software you can compare the features, you can compete with the features, but for data you need to follow the same standard. That's what I communicate with our users, with our people. That's why we need ODF. Yes. And and um, uh, what's the same? All over the world, what we experienced is every customer, if you talk and do a feasibility study and so on, is not aware of that document format issue. It's not aware, oh, I have to change 
what is this and oh no let me do it as we have done it and, and so on. No, that's a problem. We discuss it and uh, check if the consultants are aware of that. This is a, perhaps a an, an, uh, cultural aspect. It's more in the European uh, side area, but it's what we, we have uh, feedback that it's coming up uh, to all. Uh, bring me digital sovereignty in all now. Long we have a, a long time we have argued for LibreOffice with the cost argument, and this is really a bad argument because also the migration, uh, the trainings, and so on to LibreOffice costs money, costs to hire the consultants, hopefully certified consultants and so on. But, but, and if you have heard my talk uh, this morning, the, the central argument for using uh, LibreOffice is this argument digital sovereignty. The problem now is, especially in the European uh, area, the governmental area uh, have now understand <gasps> Okay, we have to do. We have to be digital sovereign because our data should not go out to to servers and so on. So come on, LibreOffice, TDF. Uh, here are fifty thousand clients. Uh, tomorrow they should use um, uh, LibreOffice. That's not handleable. That's like a uh, big bang, and big bang are always a bad uh, idea. A bad idea. So it give us time. To, um, to deploy that uh, and uh, get on the same level as uh, the proprietary of a suite and so on. So we, we, we try to check how argue such a migration or a trainer uh, to use LibreOffice. Uh, do he say, yeah, yeah, everything is fine, just deploy another Office suite and everybody is, uh, is lucky? No, that's not the reality. So far, uh, currently, what I'm doing now in Taiwan is to promote a campaign. I don't know if you have heard of that. It's called Public Money, Public Code. It's from the Europe Free Software Foundation from 2017. But it's another topic, not, not, not in this talk. But of course, if we have more time, more opportunities, I will be happy to, to share about that. But anyway, this is also the same topic. And this is what I'm doing in Taiwan now. Actually, it's combined with the code. Open document format is, is together, but yeah. and, and now I'm going another way to make our government aware of how we money, public code, the importance, just like that. Yeah. Online cooperation and smart devices, I think I've explained that uh, a lot. Another, another item is um, in, in especially interesting uh, with training uh, issues, with these new um, devices and with uh, the new functionality in, in the client um, installation to have a new user environment called Notebook Bar. It's similar to, to the ribbon from, from uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, similar. It's not the same, but, but it's similar. We have some, some items, some issues, because um, is it now the standard UI? Most mostly, most customers want to use notebook bars, but there are some. You have to be aware of some shortfalls in LibreOffice, because, for example, one, uh, not all functionality up to now, not all, all functionality in LibreOffice is um, reachable via uh, the notebook bar. So it might be not the best uh, decision to use the notebook bar as the standard. Uh, and the beginning uh, UI. Another theme, perhaps interesting for for um, computer science uh, students, we see that our great competitor is doing a lot AI stuff um, around the, the productivity suite. Uh, here mentioned in this uh, article as co-pilot, it's not just to to um, integrate ChatGPTI in the environment of uh, LibreOffice in the UI. It's also about uh, a co-pilot assistant functionality. Um, for example, there's a little tiny uh, uh, place where you can, in Microsoft Office, ask, how do I do such uh, functionality? And then they, they don't explain it anymore. They say, um, click here, and it's done. That's fine. That's 
very comfortable, but there's a bad thing. It's laid out by obscurity. So they hide the know-how, how to do the layout. And if you want to do some layouting by yourself, you don't know how. So we, when we integrate such pilots, such co-pilots, for doing uh, such things in this um, artificial intelligence manner, we should do it better. We should do not just give it uh, the, the functionality to say, okay, click here, then it's done, but we should also bring with it the explanation. And if you want to do it by yourself, you have to do this, 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 and this. So this is another very important uh, thing uh, these days. So, Finally, how to get, how to applicate to this um, certification roles. Be aware, not this um, basic level and not this development. Development is by invitation. If you have experience, first of all, we are very interested in Hero that you have experience. Franklin would be the first to want to know what is going on in professional uh, deployments uh, here in Indonesia or Asia wide. Me too, but he is uh, he's local. Um, if you are experienced, you can look on this document, foundation.org certification program. There's a lot of stuff to, uh, explained, the protocols are explained and so on. Check the prerequisites, please. We, if you fill out this um, form, there's a form, you give your name, uh, if you are experienced and so on. We, afterwards we will ask you, okay, you have done trainings, please provide us some, for example, some training materials with which you have done these trainings. Where do you have done and so on. Yes, we um, certainly we care of this information confidential, so we are not publishing them out. Uh, mostly customers are very, very keen that their own uh, training materials is not going out. Uh, uh, so. Certainly we will respect this, but we have to see some proof uh, that you have done such trainings or migration uh, projects and so on. So be aware, you will be asked, give us some documents, materials where we can uh, see. And if this is reasonable, you are invited to a review session lasting approximately one hour. And that's the, the reason why there's a committee, we have different languages, we need people from this cultural area who are doing an, an online review, asking questions about these things we have discussed, how do you have done. And afterwards we are, we are discussing and saying, yes, I think this is a very good quality and ambassador for LibreOffice trainer or for LibreOffice migrator, and then he's grant or she is granted uh, uh, this certification role. Yeah. Okay, so I can share my experience here. Uh, the first time we, we met, the first time we met is in 2015. That time uh, I just started to help our Taiwanese government to adapt to Libra Office and ODF. So I shared the experience in the Libra of Conference that year in Denmark. And uh, that is my first time to attend the Europe conference. And uh, here, Lothar has a talk, also talking about the certification company, a certification program. And I'm pretty interested, so I went to his talk. And I, after the talk, I listened to all his talk. So I go to, to him and uh, tell him that I'm pretty interested to apply for the certification uh, migration because I have experienced migration to Taiwanese government. So what do I need? So he just told me, okay, you can apply on a, a form, fill a form, and you provide, provide me the document to help the government, uh, the trainer government, the trainer's documents. And I told him, oh yes, I have all the documents, no problem. But they are all in Chinese. And he's expressing. <laughs> Because they deal with English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, maybe other language, but no Chinese. They have no way to know what the Chinese say. So he says, huh? So uh, I, I don't know how long, maybe a minute. I said, okay, you apply first and we'll see what we can do. So of course I prepare all the documents 
And of course, I add a simple description of each document, telling them that what this document is doing for writers, uh, writers training course, or for what, or for the migration project, anyway. So, in the certification uh, interview, you know, I, I think the, 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 the important point of the, this certification program, it is not like users so the question, because it's not a quiz. You have no history questions to memorize these answers. Multiple choice or something. Right, you no. have interview. And uh, in the beginning of the interview, the Idaro, the, another chairman of the co committee, Idaro told me that, okay, now we have all your documents, but they are all in Chinese. So we have no choice but to trust you. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, they, you know, in the interview, they are not just asking me about how I migrate to the, 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 to the government. They ask me about my thought about free software. work. And they ask me not to memorize the four definitions from the free, four, free software foundation. They want my own interpretation of the free software. So we shared maybe more than one hour, I remember, <coughs> from uh, through the sky. I, I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. from sky. Because I'm in Taiwan. But anyway, uh, they, they then, in the next year, 2016, when I went to, I forgot where, they oh, come back, I forgot where, oh, okay, no problem. Uh, they invited me to join the committee because they would like to more people from Asia to apply. That's why I joined the committee and that's why I started to help people from Taiwan and some from Japan. In, in 2019, we helped several people from Japan to get the trainer's certification. So that's what I can help. But the most important is that if you have the experience, you, of course you need to do all the work, you have the experience and you don't need to be afraid to be asked actually. It's just certification. Of course, you need to know some simple English, but you don't need to worry about you need to bed or some else. You don't need to worry about that. And of course, if you need, I can help some some of you, right? But anyway, to be honest, we have done some certifications with an with an a live <laughs> translator. I never experienced right. this. There was there was the, the, really a actually, live, the, live translator. Yeah, the the the, 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 the candidates. Uh, they don't want to use English because they are too shy, so I have to translate for them. But anyway, we would like to, uh, the candidate at least speak some simple English because you need to communicate with international community. Also with other project members to share these, yeah. these uh, experiences and so on. So. But really, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, just a simple quiz or somewhat. You need to uh, experience, but if you have, it's very good to apply for the certification. So we have two minutes left, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I promise that there is a way to get uh, involved in, in this area and to get this experience, which is prerequisite uh, for, for this. So we are doing more and more such workshops uh, for trainers and my, my creators. Um, this is something like a one-day workshop where we're going through all these uh, items and uh, where, where uh, committee members are uh, telling what there is, know-how, explaining how the protocol uh, and so on, so that you are more or less uh, fit to go to a customer and do such consultancy. Do you do your own experience and then come back to, to applicate uh, for, for such a certification? Um, what I want to mention is that we are doing this worldwide. As, as you can see here, we are here in, in Indonesia to talk about uh, certification. In the beginning of, uh, of uh, November, there will be a Latin American LibreOffice conference. Uh, this is another very strong community uh, we have beside uh, the Asian one and the, and the European one. I will do a talk about LibreOffice and, and certification in India, in, in Bangalore in, in uh, 10 days or so. Um, we will be in uh, Sri Lanka with such a workshop uh, at the university, uh, a two-day workshop before conference, one day and one day after uh, the conference. 
And what we are trying, I just want to mention this, is um, we have to be more um, involved uh, in the community in Africa. So we are trying to get more present in Africa. If you guys have ideas or connections or experiences uh, where we can do this on, on open source events or other, please, please um, help us and give us hints where we should do that and so on. Because Africa and North America, to, interestingly, there's a big, big uh, market player there and we are not very uh, relevant in, in North America and we want to try to be more relevant in, in North America. So that's it. Um, thank you uh, for particip participating. Perhaps one question, one... Any questions? One important question. Okay. Then the next. You can all, all you can all contact us after yes. this. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.